righteous. For praise is coming for the upright. Praise the Lord with the heart. Sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He led up the dead and storehouses. Let all the earth be the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringing the counsel of the heathen to naught. He made the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standing forever. The fountain of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. Dear most precious and loving Lord God who lives in the heavens above, we come before you this morning, Lord God, as humbly as we know how, thanking you for this day, thanking you for lifting us up, raising our eyes, showering us with the blessings of good health and strength, dear Lord, allowing us to be in our right mind, to be able to function in this day. Dear Heavenly Father, I can't begin to thank you for all that you've done, all that you've yet to do, all that you are doing. Oh, thank you, dear Lord. But Heavenly Father, we know that you are the one and the only true and living God, and we put no other God before thee. Heavenly Father, you continue to be better to us than we can ever be to ourselves, dear Lord. I thank you, dear Lord, for those blessings, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, it is only you that continues to make a way out of no way. Continue to walk close to us, Lord God. To lead us and to guide us, Lord God. To make us better sheep of your flock, Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, I can't begin to thank you for your goodness and mercy. That is truly personified, Lord God. You are better than death. Yes, Heavenly Father, you are, you are the ultimate one. You are the ultimate surgeon. You are the ultimate healer. You are the ultimate God. You are the ultimate protector. Oh, Heavenly Father, I can't begin to thank you for all that you do. Heavenly Father, I know, dear Lord, that sometimes we're, we, we face trials and tribulations, but we lean on you during those times, Heavenly Father, to lift us up, to carry us through, to deliver us to it, dear Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the skies above and the earth below. Heavenly Father, you continue to bless us with joy. And when there is joy, there is peace and there is serenity. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you for all that is all as we know it, Lord God. Thank you in the blessed and mighty name of your most darling Son, Jesus Christ, I thank thee. Amen.
Lord. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. 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 found that you'll discover these words. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but be zealous for the fear of the Lord all the day. For surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. I want to talk about the promise of a glorious future. Amen, amen, sir. The promise of a glorious future. As we look toward a brand new year, people are making New Year's resolutions and they will keep them at least for a month. Gymnasiums and fitness centers all over the world will be full in the month of January, February, and maybe March. Where people have committed to making their futures glorious. All over the world, people are, are describing them their New Year's revolution as being one that will cause them to have a prosperous New Year. They are, they've already started one day after Christmas. Said, Happy New Year, Merry New Year, a prosperous New Year to you. And these things we ought to do. But what we ought to do is make sure we focus on our future. We need to focus on the fact that this year may have been a tumultuous year. The last two years has been a have been challenging years. Years of lock up and lockdown. Years where we lack freedom to go as we please. It's been just a tough two years. Not to mention the four years before those two years. Year after year, it looks like it's getting worse and worse. Yes, sir. 
It seems as if the devil is winning. The psalmist said, and I said to you a couple of weeks ago, that the psalmist in Psalm 73 says that his feet has well not slipped. He explains to us that he had one foot on a banana field and the other one in the grave. For some of you today, some of you who may be listening, you found yourselves caught in this great situation where you struggle just to live from day to day. Unemployment racing. Food increasing. Ships and barges sitting still are empty. Somebody did not have the bright Christmas they dreamed about. But today I offer you hope. Somebody didn't get a chance to be with the person and didn't get the reward and didn't get the gift they wanted. But today I offer you hope. Somebody didn't get the house, didn't get the car, didn't get the ring, did not get, did not get pretty little things. But this morning I offer you hope of a glorious future. When we look at the text, we find ourselves listening to the wise writer. And the wise writer declares, regardless of how dim and how dismal situations may look, you still ought to have hope. Amen. The wise writer, the wise writer in the book of Proverbs declares that, that even though situations are not what you would have them to be, you got to still have hope. Amen. Somebody has been on the brink of suicide. Hold your hope. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Since this morning, I, I want to offer you hope. Right. Somebody has decided that they're going to walk away and forget it all. All that I've worked for, all that I've put my time into, hold your hope. You got to trust God. Uh -huh. And watch what God has in store. Couples sometimes get at odds with each other and they decide that even though we're in a one bedroom, you take that corner and I take this one. <laughs> and then there are others who have a whole wide house, but that house has not become a home. No, it's because we're looking at and we're looking to the wrong thing and the wrong person. Okay. I suggest you have a glorious future. If I have nothing else to say to you today, I want to let you know that God promises a glorious future. Yes, yes. I mean, things things have gone bad for all of us. I mean, all of us have gone through something. Have you gone through something? Yes, yes. Have you gone through some unexpected stuff that you never could have even dreamed of? Yes, yes. Have you come across some folk that really you knew they didn't like you, but you didn't know they'd go through that extent to that extent? Have you, have you gotten to a point where you said, okay, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Hold on a minute. There's hope. God has hope for us today. God has hope that we can live even after living. That's what I oftentimes tell you. I oftentimes tell you one of these days my tongue will cleave to the roof of my mouth. They will fold my hand in service for the very last time. People will walk by, look at me, look down at me, and say, uh, I didn't know he would go so soon. No, I know, I know. They will go down to the cemetery, plant me down there in the dirt. The preacher will say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. Our dear brother is no longer with, with us. We are looking forward to the great resurrection where Jesus Christ will crack the sky once again, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we will forever be with the Lord. My day is coming. But I still have hope. I know there's going to come a day where, where you don't want to meet with your maker. But get ready. Your day is coming. Uh, preacher, you don't have to be so hard. You don't have to uh, outline it like this. But let me tell you, just like the year is coming to an end, I lie. Are coming 
to an end. Yeah. And as we prepare to make our New Year's resolutions, as we prepare this last Sunday in this year to make our statements and promise man and promise God, you need to know you have a glorious hope. And yes, you ought to make some changes. Yes, all of us can make some changes. All of us need to make some changes, but we need to stick to it. Can you just think of one thing, just one thing that you promised you would do in the year of 2021 that you didn't just get around to it? That, that, that it just didn't show up on your itinerary? It was on your agenda? But it didn't show up. Somebody has gotten to the point where they misusing other people. They declared in 2021, I ain't going to be that mean ever again. <laughs> and here we are, over 360 days, and they still the same old same. So now there are other folk who brag about who they are. And they would tell me, preacher, you got to accept who I am. I am who I am. I'm going to be who I am. I'll tell you that's a terrible decoration. It says to me, Sister Davis, that there will be no more change. It says to me, Brother Irving, that, that I've gotten to a point where I'm stalemated. I've drawn a line in the sand and, and I'm not willing to change. You might as well be dead. Because when you're never willing to change, when you're never willing to do better, you all you already out of here. Yeah, you got blood flowing to every extremity of your body. Yes, you you have you have a heart that's beating blood there. You are inhaling and exhaling without even thinking about it. But when there is no more growth, you might as well be out of here. That's why I oftentimes tell young women, make sure he has a goal in his life. Make sure he's headed somewhere. That's why I tell young men, men, young men, you were brought up in Sunday school and church. Make sure you get somebody who, who loves the Lord. All right, because your end can be one that will drag you through the dungeons of life. Oh, Lord, I have been there, never <laughs> but you don't have to stay there. <laughs> you got the glorious, glorious future. The wise writer declares, do not let your heart end this sentence. I know they drive what they want to drive. I know they live where they want to live. I know they have a false sense of security in their dated communities. Why he says false sense is because when, when they push the button and they drive in, two, three cars drive in behind them. So it's no longer a gated community, it's an open community. And they charge extra for that carrying on. They charge a lot of money for that carrying on. Oh, I live in a gated community. You, you better get with God. Because ADT, Connect One, they and Brits cannot keep you. Only God can keep you. So don't be envious of those, envious of those who, who are sinners. Psalm 1 declares that if you if you walk with them, you'll find yourself talking with them. If you find yourself talking with them, you'll find yourself sitting with them. And you will find yourself scorning God like they scorn God. Big Mama used to say it like this. If you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Daddy used to say, watch who car you get in. Because when they pull him over, they got you also. I'm just telling you what you have to do is make sure you hang out with the right crowd. And if the crowd does not look right, then the crowd is not right. And this is just not for children. It's for grown folk. There are grown folk that are suffering from peer pressure. They are suffering from peer pressure and peer pressure. Grown folk, grown folk that want you to think they all got it all together. Grown folk that want you to think they're well established. Grown folk who want you to think that their lives are in God's hands. But every time somebody in, in, introduce some gossip to them, girl, tell me more. Dude, are you ready? You, oh, really? It's because we suffer from peer pressure. And we suffer from poor peer pressure. 
He says, whatever you do, don't let your heart, this word heart, your mind, want to be like others who are sinners. He suggests to us right here in this text, he suggests that we are better than that. I want to say to you this morning, you are better than that. I want to say this morning that you don't have to act like they act. You don't have to carry yourself like they carry themselves. You are better than that. So again, I, I remember watching, watching the, the baseball game. Now, they just started letting folk come back. But there's always a nut that will mess it up. The Astros were playing a team from out of town. And so when you buy a ticket, you just sit where your ticket is. So the opposing team fan was walking out of the stand and a bunch of guys decided to get together and punch him and, and hit him in the face. The, the sportscaster came on channel 13 and he says, we are better than that. He tries to paint a picture that the city of Houston is better than that. He tries to paint a picture that the Astros uh, Foundation, the Astros Company, the Astros Corporation is better than that. So he says, don't want to be like, don't envy those who are sinners. And I know sinners really, I mean, this is the heyday for the sinner right now. This is the heyday for the sinner because the sinner really, really, really wants you to think, and he has made many of us think that we really, really making it right. Young man, don't let a drug dealer influence you that you can have this and that if you just come on sign up with my company young girl young girl don't let pimps cause you to lose what you were reared with young girls young boys don't let the, the one that has to have attention in school Make you get kicked out of school. There, there's, a, there's a pathway that, that there's, a, there's a, a cycling trail, a cycling trail that we ride at least once a week. And when school is going on, we go, we go, we go under, we have to go under the bridge in order to, to, to avoid the traffic. And I mean, seven days out of seven school days. Eight days out of eight school days, ten days out of ten school days, when we go under the bridge, we can always see a couple that's supposed to be in school laying under the bridge, hanging out, having their own fun. I mean, probably can't spell cat. Possibly can't put together two line sentence. But they are skipping, we call it playing hooky in my day. They are skipping school when they ought to be trying to learn the lesson. And these are the ones whose parents will confront the principal and the teacher and tell them, my child don't do that. My, child, my children don't do that. My child don't, doesn't do that. I wish they would call me. I tell them, I saw them yesterday under the bridge. <laughs> when school was in session. I saw him just the other day hanging out and then to our surprise one day it wasn't a boy and a girl it was a girl and a girl. Skipping school. Let me say to you don't be envied. It is nothing really to brag about because you can beat the system. Those of us who have the ability to work those of us who have strong hands and strong backs, don't give in to the notion that we can get rich quick. Because if you get rich quick, your riches will leave you quickly. <laughs> whatever you do, whatever you do, spend time. Whatever you do, go through the process. There's a process. Even Paul says to Timothy, Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, there's a process you must go through. And he says, if anybody refused the process, in other words, if a man doesn't work, he ought not eat. There's a process. There's a process. And as we move through the process, we are not envious of sinners. It says, 
Do not let your heart, do not let your mind, do not let your understanding India be envious of sinners. But be zealous for the fear of the Lord all the day. Be excited. My first point to you is reverence the Lord. It's right there, it's right there, it's right there in the end of verse number 17, Proverbs 23, verse 17. It says, for the fear of the Lord shall you be jealous, zealous, zealous. You ought to be excited, you ought to be turned on, you ought to be thrilled about the fact that you have reverence to the Lord. This word fear in the original Hebrew term means to, to reverence God, to respect him. Now, when we talk about reverence and respect these days, Sister Brown, it's hard to find. It's hard to find in school. It's hard to find at home. It's hard to find in the community. And lo and behold, it's hard to find in the church. I, I, I told you and I tell you again, I'd like you never heard my story before, if you would. As I drove down Highway 6 in the backwoods of Mississippi, there was a little church sitting off there to the side called Markham Missionary Baptist Church. Well, that was our first Sunday church. And as I drove from Moorhead, Mississippi to Inverness, Mississippi, and back and forth, and made that curve round to Indianola, Mississippi, when I got close to the church, Sister Jackson, I would turn my, my eight-track tape down. I, I turned the Manhattan's off. I turned Teddy Pentegrass down. I, I, I moved over and shift off Barry White. Those were artists who knew singing was singing. Yeah, right. Right. And, and, and they, they didn't talk under a woman's skirt. What they did under the woman's pants, what they did is romance the woman. And told her how lovable she was and, and how thrilled he was. And then when they really, 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 when they really, really wanted to get her attention, I turned on Lynn Williams and he said, uh, 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 I love you. It is because of my respect for the Lord. And because of my respect for the Lord's house that I turned my radio down. Now folk would do anything in the house. They will say anything in the house. They will act in the way in the house. It's because they don't realize that they're messing up their glorious future. In the text, it declares that we ought to reference the word fear. We ought to reference the Lord. And he says we ought to do it all the day. You can't reverence him when you're by yourself. Or you can't reverence him when you're with the church folk. You got to reverence him when you're with everybody else. See, Paul, Paul calls, calls Peter attention when Peter tried to be one way with the Gentiles when there were no Jews around. And then when the Jews showed up, he tried to act like he was better off than the Gentiles. Now, as long as the Jews went around, he hung out with the Jews. He, he, dealt, with, he, dealt, he dealt with whatever the Jews dealt with. He understood like the Jews. He spent time with the Jews. Matter of fact, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews were his friends, but when the Gentiles showed up, he didn't want to hang out with the Gentiles. The Bible said Paul stood to his face and corrected him and let him know just because you are a Jew, you can't prove yourself better than the Gentiles just because Gentiles are around. It's like cousins. When, when some cousins come over, they don't want to deal with other cousins. It's like friends. When some friends come over, they don't want to deal with other friends. He says, respect the Lord. Reverence him. Reverence him all the day long. Verse number 18, now get out your way. For surely there is a whereafter, hereafter. There is a hereafter and there is a whereafter. There is a hereafter. And you don't have to die to realize that things gonna get better sooner or later. I, I just want to tell you, I just want to tell you, it, it doesn't matter who the president is. It doesn't matter about the outcome of the 2024 election. I want to tell you, God sits high. And God looks low. 
Matter of fact, the psalm the psalmist says in Psalm 20, 24 that the earth is the Lord. In the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord. And he controls it. The Bible teaches, regardless of who the president is, regardless of who the king, who the king is, God has the hand of the, the heart of the king in his hand, and he turns the heart of the king every which way he wants to, like many rivers. So that means, teacher, watch God turn the heart. That, that, that mean neighbor, watch God turn their heart. That mean child, you know, children these days are so disrespectful to their parents. I mean, they they can they 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 are willing. One boy was willing to spit in his mama's face. True story. Good God Almighty, I hadn't even thought of it. I hadn't even thought about seeing anybody else do it. He actually spit and spit in his mama's face. And when she died, he rushed to hear the wheel being raised. Mm -hmm. And she said to my no good son, mm -hmm. I leave you nothing. Mm -hmm. I know. I heard that crap. Mm -hmm. What we have to understand, first of all, we must reverence God and we must reverence others. My next point to you is there must be a revelation. And the revelation is there is a hereafter. Whatever you're going through, whatever life has given you, whatever turn you have taken, whatever slider you have been pitched, whatever situation you found yourself in this year, let me just share with you. You don't have to wait till next year. There's a revelation for you this year. You know, I, 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 I get, get, get this all the time. I'm, I'm going to change with my New Year's resolution. I'm going to change it. I'm just looking. I'm, I, you may not make it to next year, baby. Because God is not calling numbers. He's calling names. And when he calls names, he, he doesn't get anybody confused. Theologians believe that when, when Jesus said Lazarus come forth or Lazarus get up or Lazarus come from the dead, he had to call Lazarus by his name. Because if he had said get up, there would have been a general resurrection and everybody who died with the love and the hope of God would have rose, was have risen from the dead. God is intelligent. He doesn't have to call your number. Stop listening to people say he's going to call my, one of these days he's going to call my number. No, he's not going to call your number. He's going to call your name. And when he calls my name, I want to hear him say, servant, well done. My good and faithful servant, well done. Stop listening to folks telling you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go through that. You don't have to put yourself in that position. And certainly, you don't have to go down there in that church all the time. But when God calls my name, I want him to call me servant. Well done. But in order for you to hear the word servants well done, you would have had to do well. Yeah, yeah. I oftentimes tell the members of the New Beginning Church, give me something to preach about when I preach your funeral. Mm -hmm. I, I hear you, I hear you. You, you. you may be at mine. That's all right. But 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 give give the preacher something to say about it. Don't put the preacher in a bind. Don't don't put him in a corner. Don't make the preacher think about lying to you. Because let me just start to notice again, when old Pastor David stands before you, when old Pastor David stands before your family, I won't be like some other preachers that will lie when you are lie on you when you are dead and lie, lie on you when you're living and lie for you when you're dead. Don't do it. Brother Dixon, give me something to talk about. <laughs> give, give, me, give me something to say. I mean, I mean because, because I, I'm good at, at running to the cross. I'm, I, I can do a 15-minute sermon and talk, do a great eulogy about you. But give me something to talk about. Give me something to eulogize you with, Sister Paul. Because if you don't give me anything to eulogize you with. John chapter 3, verse 16. For the Lord so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He died. He was there. Undertakers, you may come. <laughs> Give me something to say. I mean, 
Don't don't put me in a bind. Don't 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 let me talk. Don't let me talk about the time we got into it. Don't let me talk about your bad attitude that you present before other people. Don't let me talk about how infrequent you were before COVID-19 at the church. No, don't let me talk about how you want to have it your way as if this is Burger King or somewhere. I guarantee you, I've done them. I, I have done funerals. Sister Hughes, I've done funerals where they gave me nothing to talk about but Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And so, I begin by saying, you know, that the service is for those who are living, not those who are dead. I'm shifting gears right there. When you, whenever, whenever I say that, sister, sister we're like, I'm shifting gears. The, 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 this service is for the living and not the dead. And I just want to tell you about a man called Jesus who died for you and for me. The door of the church is open. Undertakers, you can now come. For surely there is a hereafter. This is a revelation. This revelation is not just talking about when you're dead and gone. There's a hereafter right now. You don't have to stay in the position you're in. You can be changed right here, right now. I remember sitting in Miss Barnes' sixth period class. Dr. Steele started talking to me, and the first thing Dr. Steele said was, you don't have to stay like you are. She said, you can be changed right now, right here. You can be changed in this room. So, Brother Dixon, I got to bow my head. Miss Barnes' sixth period class. Room number two, across the hall from the cafeteria. About 2, about 2 p.m. or 2.30 p.m., on May the 6th, 1980. Invited Jesus Christ in my life. I say to you, you don't have to keep living the way you're living. You can be changed. Don't wait to the new year. Don't wait because the new year is not promised to you. You can be changed right here. Right here. Today. The revelation is there is a hereafter. Hereafter what you're going through. That's why we go through it. We're not talking in it. We go through it because we're getting over it. We're going through it because God is able to keep us. Don't stay where you are. Always look to be better. And some of us in this room, we've come to a point where we have good lives. We, we, we got what we need. We got everything we, we, we ask for. We, we go on where we want to go. We have great lives. But there's a better life than what you're living right now. Life is better. Life is better. One, one day, one day a woman woke up, looked at her husband and said, is this all it is to life? Is this it? The answer is no. There's a life that you have not experienced yet. Even if you're saved, if you're born again, there's life greater than what you're going through. Just get through it. Walk with God through it. There is an afterlife. Life after divorce. Life after rejection. Life after drug abuse. Life after sickness. There is afterlife and you don't have to die to reach this life. The revelation is there is a hereafter. Then he says, and your hope will not be cut off. This is the reward. He says, you put your hope in God. If you reverence him, respect him, honor him, support him, give to him. If you reverence God, then there will be a reward. If you reverence it. So you're, you're not big and bad. You're not somebody that everybody needs to be afraid of. Dr. King said, Well, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid of any man. I don't fear any man. We have to fear the God who can not only take away our bodies, but also mess up our souls. 
But we're dealing in down and trying to trying to be like the Joneses and, and watching sister girls and, and hanging out with like like we're the bachelor or the bachelorette. Don't you know there's life better than this? Yes, yes. I, I, I like watching the undercover boss. There, there's just a few. There's just a few that, that can get my attention. There's just a few. I watch Shark Tank because people are creative and they're doing great things. And even if they don't get a shock, they got they got the publicity they need to make millions. So I watch Shark Tank and, and, and these people and some of them young people are experiencing life like no one else. They are spending time along with God, and God is showing them some things that they have never seen before. And they are able to be creative with it. The other one, the other one that I watch, the other one that I watch is the undercover boss. And then the good thing about the undercover boss, it paints a picture of people that are doing well, and it also gives the honest picture of folks that are not doing so well. When, when the boss brings in the person that's not doing so well, what the undercover boss would do, he would say, now, I have some concerns about how you handle customers and how you handle people. It's kind of like if I came in one day dressed like a bum, looking like a bum, had a, had a guest preacher here, and I sit and I watch the first impression ministry do their thing. And then and when the day was over, I would say, Sister Nanlo, Sister Paul, Brother Dixon, I'm Fred that showed up as a guest at the church. And I want to let you know that this is not the, what the first impression ministry is all about. But on the other hand, I would hope I would be able to call them in and say, I love the way y'all handle things and the businesses that walked in the door. I love how you watch the parking lot. I, I love how you usher folk in place. And even though you have, have a mask on, they can feel your smile from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could call them in. And because you have been so faithful to your responsibility, yeah. I want to give you $10,000 for the gym equipment you always want. I want to give you $10,000 just to repair the floor that you want. I want to give you $20,000 to take a vacation that, that you have never taken before. <laughs> Your hope is in Jesus. Because, Sister Darren, you can't put your hope in the old pastor. You can't put your hope in men. You can't put your hope in anybody else. He says, surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. He says, if you reverence God, you have the revelation that there is a hereafter, and then there are great rewards. And the reward is that you will never be cut off. Your hope, this word hope means expectation. You ought to expect some things. Of your spouse, you ought to expect some things. It crushes me when Sister Davis says, see, I see you didn't have time to do that today. <laughs> I feel, I feel terrible. I, I feel like I have let her down. And guess what? She says, I see you didn't have time to get that done today. What she's saying to me is, you disappointed me, and now I feel like I've disappointed her. But there is hope. Because I still have expectations. The kitchen floor is still there when I get back home. The mop is still hanging. The, 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 the dust pan in the room is still available, Sister Richard. And I will not disappoint. Because I don't want to be cut off. God says, God says, God says, I will not cut you off. He says, your hope is your expectation. You just expect some things to happen. And throughout our lives, we expect things to take place. It's kind of like, it's kind of like well, I shouldn't have to check everything to do. There are great expectations in each of us. God has given us breath to breathe. He has given us blood that flows to every extremity of our body. 
God has tremendously blessed us. And not only has he, he blessed us with one or two talents, most of us are multi-talented. We can multitask. We can do great things. But the graveyard has more talent than there's left on planet Earth. Because people did not move. People did not do what was expected of them. And they always talk about, well, he didn't treat me right. Let me tell you, I, I don't want to hear it. I'm, I'm over it. I got, I got over it at age two. I'm over it. I grew up on a plantation, Wayne King Plantation. We, we, our activity, our after school activity was jumping on the back of a cotton truck, packing down the cotton. We thought the man was affording us a playground. The cat was soft. He would say, y'all come on over here. And we would jump on the cat. We would flip on the cat. We would wrestle on the cat. And we thought we had a soft playground. And then when they come dump some more cat, we get off the trailer. They dump some more cat. We get back on there and start flipping each other again. That man used us to pack down cat. So when he took his trailer in, he wouldn't have to take two in. He would just take one trailer in. And here we are, people talking about uh, video games and, and playing and driving cars. We didn't have a car. All right. okay. So don't give me that. Huh? <laughs> I, I lived through it. Our activity was rolling pies with water in it. Right. Yeah. And when we got in the house, we were going straight to the tub. We were muddy. Our activity was not swinging in a swing unless we put one in a tree. Our activity was climbing trees and picking up a blackberries. Our activity was shelling butter beans. Our, our activities was, was picking greens. Our activities was a lifestyle of living. And we have folk these days that got it going on, and they'd rather sit on their gift than allow God to use their gift. Let me tell you, God is only going to reward those who are doing well. Your hope, your expectation will not be cut off. Finally, I know I was supposed to have three points, a song and a hoop. I cut off the song. I killed the hoop. But I want to end with rejoicing. I'm ending, Sister David, Sister Hughes, Brother Alfred. I'm, I'm closing now. What should we be doing other than reverence God? Brother Whitlock, I'm closing now. What should we do other than obeying God? Yeah, yeah. What should we do with the revelation that there is a hereafter? There is a whereafter. There is a place that we're going to. What should we do as we admire the reward, not only the reward that God has for us on the other side, but God has reward for us on this side. Just because you poor and broke, baby, doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Just because you're not rich, there's nothing wrong with being rich. Go ahead and get rich. You ought to make sure you're rich. Get all you can. And be willing to share. Because God has rewards. His rewards are many. But we ought to be rejoicing. Don't wait. Don't wait to the mark. You ought to rejoice right now. Celine Dion had it right. She had the song right. But she was singing to the wrong man. Celine Dion had it right, but, but she was singing to the wrong person. Celine Dion, in her, in, her, in her duration, in her illustration, in her song, she said, because you love me. Celine Dion said, for all the times you stood for me, I'm telling you, God stood for me. When no one else would stand for me, God stood for me. So then he says, for, for the truth you made me see. God made me see truth. And there's no one like him. For the joy you brought to my life when you turned wrong into right, I am so ever so grateful because you love me. God didn't love me because, because I was so lovable. God didn't love me because, because I had done everything right. 
God didn't love me because I did things like he told me to do it. He loved me just because he loved loving me. For the joy you brought to my life, for the wrong that you made right, God made me right when I was wrong. Yeah, but for every dream you made come true. Love you found, man, that love I found in you. Celine Dion had it right. If we're going to find love, we see, we're looking for love in all the wrong places. And we're, we're expecting folks to give us love that cannot give us love. He, she says, she says, in you, Lord, I found love. He says, I'll be forever grateful, grateful, God. I, I will be forever grateful, God. You're the one who held me up. You never let me fall. You're the one who saw me through. You saw me through it all. To me, your hand was right. She says, you were my strength when I was weak. You were my voice when I could not speak. You were my eyes when I could not see. You saw the best in me. Celine Dion had it right. She was singing to the wrong person. She said, you gave me faith because you loved me. I'm in everything I am because you love me. When I think about this song, I think about and how he blessed us. I think about the fact that God loved us so much that over 2,000 years ago, he gave his only begotten son. His name is Jesus. He is the righteous lamb. He is Jesus himself. He is the heart boy in the back. Over 2,000 years ago, he gave, got off in a place called Bethlehem of Judea. The only begotten son of God. He got off. They, they, they didn't have room for him in the end. No hotel. No motel. No inn. No room. No space. My Lord and my God was born in a stable. They laid him in a hawk trough. They wrapped him with strips of cloth. Yes, they did. He came down to 42 generations. My Lord and my God, Jesus and Christ, was taken away out of no way. Oh, yes, he was. My Lord and your God, he loved us so much until he gave his only begotten son. He walked these mundane shores. Yes, he did. He walked these mundane shores. Doing no wrong. But need me. Here, my Lord and your God. Need me. Made him take the cross. And he walked up Calvary's hill. Need me. With him all night long. Need me. Set him up in court. Mean men miss you, Jesus. Mean men whipped him to blood, was snapped out of his wounds. Mean men whipped him all night. Mean men hung him high, dropped him low, stretched him wide. My Lord and your God, Jesus the Christ, he died a day. He died. On Calvary's hill, he died on Calvary's cross for you and for me. He's not one of Mary's baby. He's a full grown man. He died a day. They took him off the cross, laid him in a barn too, because he loved me. He made me who I am. He was my strength when I was weak. Jesus the Christ, he was my voice when I couldn't speak. Jesus the Christ, he opened my eyes so I could see. Jesus the Christ, they laid him in a bar of two. It was a bar of two because it didn't need it too long. He gave me faith so I could believe. Hallelujah to the Lamb. They laid him in a bar of two. 
can you get this with me? It was a barbecue. It was Joseph brand new to. Joseph L. Adam Mathias, brand new to. He died and he was buried in Joseph too. But early, that Sunday morning, early, early in the morning, early, the grave couldn't keep him. Early in the Sunday morning, early, death couldn't hold him. Early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. I am everything I am because he loved me. He loved me so much that he rose from the dead. He had me in mind. He had you in mind. He got up, I tell you, as you enter into this new year. Make sure you understand he doesn't love you. She may not love you. It may not show love towards you. But Jesus, he loves you in spite of you, in spite of your condition, in spite of your meanness, in spite of your sickness. You can be changed right here, right now. He loves you. He loves you. You have a glorious future. So what you didn't get what you want? You have a glorious future. And you know one thing? We got a glorious future down here. But in the bye box, when my tongue cleaves to the roof of my mouth, in the bye box, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. In the bye box, we're going to join the saints of God. Jesus Christ will stop in the air. He will rapture us up. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him. And then that. Paul says to the church of Thessalonica, we will forever be with the Lord. We better rejoice down here. There are rewards over there. There are rewards down here. We ought to rejoice over here. We ought to celebrate over here. We ought to show him some love over here. I'm forever grateful because he loved me. I was unlovable on my way to hell. But he loved me. And he keeps right on loving me. In the midst of my mess, in the midst of my stuff, my mess became my ministry. In the midst of all I was going through, he yet loved me. There may be somebody here today who needs to know that Jesus loves you. Jesus, he loves you. He guarantees you a glorious future. He guarantees it. He said you will not be cut off. This word here after it, it, it's, it's the root word for future. It's the root word for a glorious future. Do you want to have a glorious future? I know you've been through some stuff. But God has taken us through. And we have a glorious future. If we're going to get through it, it's going to take God to get us through. The door is open. The door is open. If you've not touched Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to trust him. The door is open. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. While you got time. While you got time. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, take it.
or you can walk down the aisle on social media. We'd be glad to welcome you to this great church on the southeast side of Houston, Texas. Inbox us and let us know that number one, you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Inbox us and let us know that you have repented of your sin and been redirected through this message. Inbox us and let us know that, that you want to join the New Beginning Church. We have distant members who are participating and who are givers to our church and they listen to our church service. We want to welcome you to the New Beginning Church. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. I said it's offering time. Time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrifice. It is offering time. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way up in the air, and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand up in the air, and you will be served. If you need a little, please raise your hand way up there. And you will, you will be served. There are two envelopes. One is white and red, and the other is white and blue. The white and blue envelope is for tithes, also and sacrificial gifts. The white and red envelope is for the pastor's love also. As you fill out your envelope, please do not seal it. You fill out your envelope, please do not seal it. And please write legibly and put your whole address, including your zip code, on that envelope. And if you're in an apartment, put your apartment number on there. If you're listening live, you can contribute in two, two ways. Number one, you can contribute by way. I'm going to it down just a little bit. You can contribute by P.O. Box. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can enter your offering, your tithes by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Father God, we thank you for every giver. We thank you for every gift. We ask you to bless us as we come to give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Right, just this side to stand, if you would. Father, first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's time, offering and sacrifice gifts. Thank y'all so much. 
thank y'all so much for, for being a part of our service on today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We will have watch night service this year. Our watch night service will be way of, by way of Zoom. We will have Zoom watch night service. For those of you who are not very familiar with how to handle Zoom, I uh, pray that between now and December 31st, you get somebody to, uh, to assist you. We will have a nice, wholesome time. It will begin at 8 p.m., 8 p.m. We should be out between 8 p.m. and 9.30 for sure. We will watch the whole year out starting at 8 p.m. And we will look to be out between 9 and, and 9.30. That's December 31st, 2021. If you do not get a text from me, whether you're visiting with us or you are a you are a member, if you do not get a text from me every Monday morning, if you do not get a text from me every Monday morning, I need you to either call me or give me some information before you leave today so I can give you the Zoom account that we will be logging in on and the Zoom passcode ID and all the stuff. If you're not getting a, receiving a text from me every Monday morning, then I need to get with you so I can add you to my text messages. And so you can, number one, get the Word of God every Monday morning. We'll be reading through the Word of God every Monday morning. For the year of 2021, I mean 2022, for the year of 2022, we will continue our Bible listening uh, some of you said it was pretty tactful, pretty taxing to listen to the Bible and try to jumble it down. So this year we will begin our Bible listening January 1, and we will go to December 31st, and we'll actually just to listen to the Bible, and if there's anything that God speaks to you in that particular verse or two, write it down. But our, our Monday morning uh, text for our Sunday school scripture is what we will be journaling this year. It's, it's very short, maybe five, six, seven, eight verses. We'll be journaling every Monday through Sunday. We'll be journaling. We'll be writing down what the Lord is speaking to us. And our Sunday school teachers will be so glad if you do that. And so you will be better prepared for Sunday school as we go into the new year. Remember, we're trying to change some things about us. And regardless of how good we are, we can use some change. Amen. Uh, we're looking at the Fix My Prayer Life book. I went ahead and ordered 25 Fix My Prayer Life books. I have 13 people who have signed up with me. Those the first 13 will go to those people. I promise you that you will be charged $20 and it's, it's still $20 for you. If you do not get these first 25, you'll be ordering your own book and that book is $25 instead of $20. When I say 25, it's $21.95 plus shipping. It comes up to around $25. So I still have 12 of those books left. And in order to prepare for the, the fast and praying that we will do in this journal starting January the 10th, I want you to read Daniel chapter 10. I want every person to read before the first of the year, January, Daniel chapter 10. We will be praying and fasting. And Daniel chapter 10 gives us the Daniel fast. Brother Irvin, we're going to be fasting for, 10, for, 20, for 21 days, Brother Irvin. Brother Irvin, Brother Irvin we're going to be fasting, man. For 20, Brother Irvin, we're going to be fasting. I see you jumping up and down. I know you're glad about it. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to be fasting for 21 days. But look at Daniel chapter 10. And Daniel chapter 10 will give you the fast that we will we will be doing. Also, uh, many of you saw the sign as you begin to come in today. Uh, we are requiring masks in the building. The Omicron variant is, is raging. It's uh, all over Houston, all over Fort Bend, all over the state. And I want to let you know that we want to worship in a safe environment. So the sign outside says, mask before you enter the building. Now, I've seen signs that say mask before you enter the building, and then when everybody get in, they take the mask off. Uh, we want you to keep your mask on as long as you're on this campus, and then don't huddle, uh, don't have extended conversation other than with your family that you're with on a regular basis. 
we want to make sure that we, we stay safe. We've had to shut the church down before and we don't want to do that again. So what we want to do is make sure we obey the rules and the regulations of the CDC as, as well as, uh, as the church. Amen. So keep your mask on. Uh, come on to church. Keep your mask on. We are still taking temperatures to those who are listening. We are safe taking temperatures. We are, we are asking you if you're sick with any flu-like symptoms to stay at home. Amen. Amen. On your way out the door, first impressions are going to give you some bottles, uh, some small bottles to They're going to give you some small bottles. These are not five-hour energy drinks. Please don't drink it. They're going to give you small bottles. They look just like five-hour energy drink. Please, ma'am, please, sir, do not drink them. <laughs> do not drink them. You didn't drink one, did you, Brother Dixon? Okay, I just said, do not drink them. You see, you can tell if a person still nowadays, right? <laughs> you mess around drinking if you want. <laughs> Amen. So they're going to give you... Uh, a small bottle. These are small compartment bottles that you can keep in your purse, your car, uh, even in your pocket. These are hand sanitizers. So do not. We're going to give one to each person as you as you leave the room. I have on my prayer list Brother Raymond Alfred Jr., the Woods family, Sister Lee and Darrington. Am I missing anybody from the prayer list? Am I missing anybody that needs to be on the prayer list? Amen. Sister Sister Lula Richard, Sister Lula Richard, Sister Lula Richard, what we stand to be this mess? Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, 
will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you. It's our prayer.